with your knee, let's have a little look. Still some fluid in it. So if there's uh, when we get in there, and I can see fluid that's easy enough to take it out. Yep. We'll take it out. Yep. See, evidence is with all these lubrication injections is the more concentrated it is, the yep. better it is. Yep. So we'll we'll do that, and yep. again we'll send it off to the lab just to be sure to be sure. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, we'll clean it, and we'll put a an, uh, a bit of local under the skin because it's a bigger needle because it's thick yep. stuff. And then um, that's where we'll go in. But the knee sack, you know, comes along all the way up, yep. so it'll wash all through the knee quite nicely. But that, yep. the evidence says that's the best spot to, to pop it. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, when there's uh, people have got absolutely no fluid, and it's going to be really hard to sort of get that sack because it's like a collapsed plastic yep. bag. You know, trying to get a needle into between the two mm -hmm. legs is pretty hard. Sometimes we will do where the surgeons go. Yep. But usually, if there's some space, we'll go go up here. Mm -hmm. So we'll just we'll clean it up. Um, we'll then sort of scan it, and uh, away we go. So I'll put this just under your your knees, just it gives it a good sort of position. So about 30 degrees or so, reflection is uh, is good. And then we'll just clean it up. <laughs> oh, that came on, did it? No, no, I had on the phone. <laughs> I couldn't get the song out of my mind. Yeah, I, I love the fact that it was a. Um, uh, the military band was, was helping as well. Yeah. Yeah, well, that was, um, I was telling Hooper that my uh, great uncle was in in the First World War. He died in the Western Front, and that, he was in the 10th, 27th yeah. Battalion. That's a South Australian Battalion. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, where did they fight again? The Western Front? Uh, he didn't front. do very well. He died the first day in combat. Oh, that's at right. Because yeah. yeah. So. But they go back a long way, the 10th, 27th, so the, sort of the, the first 10th one, were on um, that Gallipoli and yeah. the 27th came and when they evacuated them off Gallipoli they went to um, Egypt mm -hmm. and then the 27th came over and they, uh, the 27th reinforced them. Oh right. So then they became the 10th and 27th. So you can never film the map pack. Yeah. So we've got there's the edge of the patella, we've got the anterior cortex of the femur there, and that's all the fluid in Jeff's knee joints or knee. That's the quadriceps tendons going up to the quads, skin at the top, and uh, yeah, like I said, patella. The normal amount of fluid is probably about a thumbprint's worth of lubricating fluid, so all this would be inflammatory ext fluid extending up to the top of the patella pouch. So we've got quite a bit of Need juice there. Juice. So what we'll do too, I've got the trouble with the floor. Really tidy. Is I'll just pop this on the other side. That's all right. That's fine. Good. And so we'll do it transverse. So a little sting. And this is just some one percent local anaesthetic. Raise a bit of a bleb. And then the idea is you just sort of inject down the synovium to try and sort of numb up the synovial membrane a little bit because it can be ticklish. And so that's the bleb and also acts as a bit of a marker point for where we're going in. And Jeff's been very mean and holding onto his blood today, so there's not a little pinprick of blood. But often that sort of does guide the in injection. Yeah. So we'll get things ready, like that, like that. Got an 18 gauge needle, which I usually use if I can. Pop it on the 10 mil syringe for aspirating. And monovisc. So occasionally I'll use that sort of clean sterile plastic as somewhere to put the knee fluid if the unexpected amount of knee fluid and I haven't got my plastic tray organised. But um, So that's quite a useful sort of secondary little tray. And I'll just leave that here. So with a empty syringe with the nine, uh, 18 gauge on it, we'll re-scan. Re and you can see, perhaps having a look on the transverse now, We've got, so the black indicates fluid, which we can play with and jump up and down on it. 
the hard white curve on the bottom is the anterior cortex of the femur and uh, that's our target area yeah. so we that to do the so a little bit of pushing now Jeff so that's where we've put it so that's the superior lateral sort of uh, corner the landmarks are the top of the patella and really down so you could sort of come a little bit further down but there's so much fluid it was always going to be hard to miss but that's the benefit of using your ultrasound as you can see where you're going mm -hmm. yeah. but if you're just using uh, landmarks you can palpate the top of the kneecap uh, and the, or the top corner of the kneecap there and then come down a, a centimeter and go underneath there but with the ultrasound we've got uh, the luxury of seeing what we're doing Question mark, will that yep. have been secreted since I saw you last? Or? Yeah, absolutely. So that's a uh, normal looking sort of clear knee fluid. And if you have a look on the ultrasound again, you can see where the, the needle is obviously. Yep, and uh, and you can see you're in the middle of the space, so you're not nowhere near yep. the edges. Yeah, so that's one of the reasons why we use this lubricating fluid is to reduce the amount of inflammation. So it tends to decrease the amount of inflammatory fluid as well as uh, improve the pain. Yes, because the inflammatory fluid's got um, all these enzymes in it which have got no idea whether you've just got a sore knee or whether in fact you've got a bit of wood in the knee. All it knows is it's inflamed and sore. Mm -hmm. So the enzymes are desired, designed originally just to uh, dissolve things, you know, so whether it's a rose thorn or a piece of wood or whatever. So if you leave joint fluid in the knee for a long, long times, all the enzymes will start sort of chewing away the cartilage yep. and uh, really weakening the bone. They weaken the bone cartilage interface and uh, then the cartilage just keeps peeling off. And I can remember when I was teaching down at Wirreanda with Jenny, they took a huge amount of fluid out, you know, it was fully blown up. And I, I think I've sort of, over the years since then, it's always been a bit puffy. Yeah. But it's, um, yeah, people have it for years and years. So, so this is typical. So, so often when you um, aspirate and it starts to get a bit stuck, mm -hmm. what happens is the... Uh, it starts lying against the synovial wall, so you can see the hard white line lying against the edge of the uh, lower border of this um, superpatellar pouch. Yep. And if you pull suction, it just sort of sucks the superpatellar pouch oh, yes. onto it. Yep. So withdrawing it and sticking it in the mid ear a little bit more, so you can see the end of the needle again is uh, a little bit more in the middle. Yes. Usually, well, you, and you can withdraw it a little bit. Um, you can see the end of the needle there in the right, space. Yeah. yeah. So if you kept it as far in in the same position, you'd you'd finish aspirating, thinking you'd you'd done all the job, but you're still going. And if you look at the fluid now, this is a sign of how florid the synovitis is. So if you touch the synovial lining of the knee, often with chronic inflammation, it's really friable, and you get a little bit of bleeding even if you just touch it. So that's what we're getting now and I really uh, don't mind not sending that off to the lab because that's just telling us he's got a inflamed sore, sore knee really um, and there's no point sending that off to the lab because it's just going to say it's red blood cells so we're starting to get to the point we can't get a lot more out and that's actually a bit of air going back into the knee so you can hear a very that sucks so we're going back to that knee ultrasound now you can't really see any fluid pockets or, or layers there's a little pocket just on the left there it's where the needle's sort of hiding in that little pocket mm. and but we can't sort of get any more more fluid out which is good so we'll just do a bit of a swap 
So there they are. That and, and interestingly, even though there was a sign of itis there, um, Jeff didn't have any um, reaction to the cortisone. So because we've been aspirating, we sort of know that the needle's in the knee. Yeah, we can feel it. We can feel it. So, usually I like to try and see where the needle is. Which is actually proving a bit hard. We've taken so much fluid out. Mm. And, uh, and it just comes out. So it would have been nice to show you where the needle was and the fluid going in, but not today. Um, and uh, what's reassuring though is even the radiologists sometimes have a hard time seeing where the needle is, but often you can see where the fluid sort of floats back into the super patella pouch, even if you don't see where the needle is. And uh, so Jeff's got two two kneecaps again, which is nice. Sweet home Alabama. Oh, you're all right. So you can see where the wound is there. And what I do, I usually do is just do a off-site dressing over it. And then try and just put a waterproof dressing over the top of that, just to be sure to be sure. You just ask people to keep that on as long as they can. Mm. And um, in reality, probably two or three days is enough, but you know, we've just made a hole into the knee joint, so keeping it covered and out of the water for a couple of days would be a wise idea. Mm -hmm. And we're all done. <laughs>